a couple hours after my hike to Mount Whitney, I had pulmonary embolism, which is uh, blood clots in the lungs that landed me in the hospital. Let's talk about pulmonary embolism on active people because this can because I realized that this can happen to anybody. I knew this, but not on someone who's been very active. I don't so. smoke and was able to compensate, which is supposed to have been a dangerous event um, in anybody's life, both for the lungs and the heart. So some people don't survive from pulmonary embolism if left untreated. Both pulmonary embolism and altitude sickness um, is hard. They're both hard to differentiate unless you actually experience the pulmonary embolism. So let's discuss briefly in simple terms what pulmonary embolism means. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing so your body needs your heart and your lungs, and that's your heart in the middle and the lungs all around it. So pulmonary embolism is a blood clot in the body that can travel in our body. So the venous system, which comes from the deep vein, lower extremities, your, your legs, where blood that needs oxygen comes from the right side of the body back to the heart and the lungs to get oxygen to be delivered again to the rest of the body. So if you have a blood clot, they can travel through the pulmonary artery to the branches of the lungs until there is a blockage of the clot in the lungs, preventing the blood flow uh, to the lungs, to the heart, and to the rest of the body. So the clot can range from small to big. If the clot is bigger, then it will obstruct the blood flow to your heart and the rest of your body. 99% of us have five lobes in the lungs in order to breathe. I had four of my lobes with blood clots and technically was breathing on one lobe and limited on the other ones. So if there is a pulmonary embolism, there is a ventilation and no perfusion, meaning blood flow, no blood flow anymore um, to part of your lungs and oxygen goes inside the alveoli. And if there's blood clot, there's no blood flow. So you get a sign of uh, shortness of breath, having a hard time breathing called tachypnea and the obstructed embolism has platelet aggregation and have the potential to release serotonin that makes your uh, branches in your lungs uh, leading to bronchoconstriction to ronchi which is one of the signs ronchi is the blockage of fluid in the lungs and there's an increased resistance to blood flow and can cause cardiac arrest and can get the lungs and can get the lungs to infarct causing chest pain as a symptom also called uh, also called pleuritic pain then the heart has increased workload causing the right ventricle to fail eventually uh, you'll have the signs of tachycardia which is uh, fast um, heart rate or you feel that your heart's racing and an extra heart sounds the cardiovascular then uh, system during this time is now non-compliant. Signs and symptoms of pulmonary embolism include shortness of breath, rapid breathing, chest pain that may increase when taking a deep breath, rapid heart rate, light headedness and or passing out and coughing up blood. Initial diagnostic workout for pulmonary embolism is looking for effusion or white opacity on the x-ray. And of course, uh, they include a blood draw as well specifically looking at the coagulation studies called the D-dimer, and if it's elevated, it can be an evidence of pulmonary embolism. The second one is Doppler ultrasound of your lower extremities for evidence of any blood clots, and they also look at electrocardiogram, uh, strain on the heart, and then arterial blood gas if need be. First, the gold standard to look for pulmonary embolism is uh, CT angio with contrast, where they put in an intravenous um, IV an IV on you and then they inject the contrast and then um, and then in the CT angio a mass filling defect which is uh, indicates embolus uh, appears white risk factors for pulmonary embolism include deep vein thrombosis number two is ortho orthopedic procedure number three if you're uh, no prophylactic treatment like compression stockings for varicose veins and if also if you're on an anticoagulation medication. Other risk factors include abdominal surgery, any sedentary lifestyle, uh, and then if you're on estrogen-containing birth control pills, also um, you're at risk for pulmonary embolism. Other risk factors is uh, if you're a smoker, if you have a hypercoagulable state like protein, CRS deficiency, factor V Leiden, and also if you're pregnant.
Other risk factors include uh, endothelial wall damage, such as surgery or trauma or a bee sting or a snake bite. Uh, next one is if you're over 30 years of age, women over 30 years of age. And also there is a question about uh, COVID vaccine causing blood clots as well. The treatment for pulmonary embolism depends on if you're stable or unstable. So for the unstable ones, uh, the recommended treatment is pulmonary embolectomy um, if allergic to anticoagulation. And if you're not allergic to anticoagulation, they are started on thrombolytics like streptokinase to break the embolus to allow the return of blood flow. And then they are started on anticoagulants like heparin. Uh, for the stable ones, uh, they can start them on Luvinox uh, sub-Q intravenous uh, shot and then uh, taper them to uh, Eliquis, for example, as an anticoagulant for home, and then that's taken twice a day. So but if you're allergic to anticoagulants, they'll do some kind of a filter uh, right at the bottom of the right side of the heart through the inter, uh, inferior vena cava to stop the free-moving embolus to prevent the embolus uh, from, from going to the heart. Follow-up will be depending on the doctors who have seen you or, phys or providers who have seen you at the hospital. Hematology and primary care providers are usually the ones that will need to see you in the outpatient setting. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. I'm grateful, oh yeah, able, oh yeah, I'm stable, oh yeah, no label, oh yeah, you know me.